Pink and Trustful, such a beautiful song. We've got an even more beautiful song to play uh, in just a moment. Uh, the heartbreaking account of an 11-year-old girl from Gosport who bravely talked of her experience on camera as she faced cancer for the fourth and final time is being shared by Stand Up To Cancer just months after she passed away. And it's hoped that by choosing to tell her story, Elizabeth Rooney will raise awareness and help for others, something her family say she felt super passionate about. And here's an extract from that film where Elizabeth talks about her treatment. Well, today I'm here to get rid of the other bits of cancer I have now. And I'm scared of it because it's in lots more places. My mum's side from it. But if you want to start living a happy life, just got to trek on the path it's decided to give you. When you have stuff like this, you just got to make the most of the time you have, because it may be too late. What a beautifully brave girl. I'm very sorry to say that Elizabeth passed away earlier this year while she was receiving treatment in October um, of last year. Elizabeth's mum, Charlotte, who she'd done the race for life for with two, we uh, two years ago, died from breast cancer. Um, an unbelievably sad story. And we're joined by Elizabeth's stepdad, Matthew Lewis now. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us and okay. sharing the story. I really appreciate it. Um, wonderful to hear about Elizabeth and just hear what a beautiful young woman she was. Yeah, she... she... She really was an inspiration to so many people. She had cancer four or five times. We lost track because of reoccurrences and stuff like that. But um, she truly inspired people out of, of deep times themselves. And and that was just in her nature, same as a mum in, in their nature. How long had Elizabeth been struggling for this? And how long had you been in her life whilst you know this was all going on? So um, I met Elizabeth for the first time in 20s. 2016, start of 2016, so she would have been five at that point, and she'd already had cancer once then, so she had it when she was first, when she was three. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, your your wife Charlotte went on to, to have breast cancer and sadly lost her life to that as well. Just just an awful couple of years for the family. Yeah, it, it was. Obviously, it's difficult um, with things like that, but, um, and, and then you throw in COVID as well in 2020 into that as well, and that on the face of it is difficult, but the, the offshot of that was it gave us lots of time together. Mm -hmm. I was working from home for three months. Um, they were shielding, so they couldn't leave the house, and it just led to some great family moments, if I'm truthful. And those are the things you can hold on to for so many years to come. And and having Elizabeth stories, a uh, story like this, put out on um, Stand Up To Cancer, talking about it so openly and honestly, uh, why is it that she wanted to be part of that? Was that the reason she just wanted her story to go on for, for eternity? Yeah, she was... Her mum was a big passionate supporter of Race for Life and Cancer Research UK and, and Elizabeth followed that as well. Um, she was more than happy to to put a story out. Uh, and at that time, her story was about how she was dealing with cancer and the loss of her mother. And obviously it, it, it developed to what it was, but she was really keen for people to... I think she just wanted to inspire and help people. That's all she ever wanted to do. That's an amazing thing. And from, you know, someone that didn't have years on their side to, to have that wisdom, I think is absolutely amazing. And credit to yourself and Charlotte. And I know um, Elizabeth's dad as well, who's very much part of this. So, uh, yeah, lovely to hear her story. What do you hope for everyone watching Elizabeth's film? What do you hope they take away from it? It's kind of twofold. For me personally, I hope that they get to see the people I knew, they get to see how amazing and inspiring they were. But the, the second side is that, you know, you can, it, it might just persuade the one person to donate that, that might, might not have. And I've said this before, that might be that one pound that funds the research that's going to make that big difference because it, it might be their way in and just hasn't got the money, we don't know. Mm, yeah, and obviously um, for breast cancer as well, do your checks, everything we're supposed to do as as um, people will hear about on Stand Up To Cancer tonight. But I want to ask, how are you doing though? Are you okay? I'm okay, yeah, I have had plenty of time off. I've been well supported for the Navy in my time and so I'm back into work, the kids are back into school. Mm -hmm. We're just readjusting to our new normal now. Yeah, and I know you work closely with cancer research as well, so um, yeah, that's um, yeah, good to good to know. Well, thank you so much for sharing thank the you. story. Really appreciate it. Can't wait to hear about Elizabeth's story tonight on Stand Up To Cancer. So yeah, thank you for, for allowing us to, to broadcast this as well. 
Thank you. Really appreciate it. That's Matthew Lewis there. Elizabeth's stepdad, as you heard, you can hear her story uh, on Stand Up Cancer tonight. I think it's well worth a listen. And um, we've got a beautiful song here to play for Elizabeth and, and tribute to her. This is her favourite song, and I understand it was played at her funeral as well. This is Kiala Settle. This is me from the fabulous film The Greatest Showman, a stunning song as well. So this is dedicated to Elizabeth. 